And this topic, uh, YouTube and online video audience research, uh, I started 17 years ago. And then I was, at that time, nobody cared about online videos and think that it's just a gimmick thing. But now, of course, everybody knows how important it is, especially with the pandemic. OK, so online videos, when we talk about online videos, actually there are many different types. And we have to understand that the different type of videos actually consist of professional and also user generated amateur videos. And also the system also affects how it works. So primarily we can put the videos into four types. One is closed system, the over the top, OTT streaming of professional made videos like Netflix, Hulu Plus, Disney Plus, or Amazon videos. These are things that usually we pay for a uh, fee, subscription fee to get access to entertainment, long form films and movies and series. Another type is the open system like YouTube, Hulu, TikTok, and Vimeo. These are the videos that we can get access to it without any membership. You just log to the website and see whatever. But of course, we can also join as a member, as a subscriber, but it's free. Another important video source is the social media, which like Facebook, Twitter, there are a lot of videos out there on social media as well. And also there's a video download service like iTunes. The difference between video download service and these system streaming video services is that you can own the video. So when you download it, it's on your own device and you can repeat playing anytime you want and you can do whatever you want with it. So my presentation is mostly based on my book, The Audience and Business of YouTube and Online Videos, which was published two years ago. And actually paper uh, back version is coming out uh, this September. Okay, so based on the book, we found that uh, the college students in the US, they mostly use YouTube a lot and much more than Netflix. And then the third highest one is Facebook and then Twitter. So social media actually is a major source apart from the open media and then the other much less. YouTube is actually imagined it as the large TV channel in the world that consists of everything that you have in the world. So basically it's the largest global video portal that we can find with and also the largest online advertising platform. 80% of the content produced uh, in the, on YouTube are actually outside the US. So even though it's based in the US, actually it's a very global platform. And in terms of the size, it's huge. At least 4 billion videos were out there and with 400 hours of videos uploaded every minute. It's in terms of advertising, it pioneered a true view or the skippable advertising format that you can see a skip ad. This is the uh, con uh, innovation from YouTube trying to make it more pleasant to the viewers, let them to have a choice. Plus there are also multiple different advertising format that you can find on YouTube now, then mid roll, pre roll, full advertising, and or even no advertising if you pay for the premium service. So right now, last year, YouTube's advertising revenue is US $15 billion. So it's the largest advertising medium. So look at YouTube. What are the most popular YouTube channels in the US and worldwide? And first of all, you will be very proud that India is on top, of course, of some of them, uh, especially like the most subscribed channels and everything. For example, the most popular channels on YouTube, top one is 140 million T-series, an Indian company. And then the fourth one, 73.2 million subscribers is Set India. And then C Music Company, 55.3 million. And in terms of the enterprise, the companies that actually run those uh, different channels, these top three are US companies, it's worldwide. Viacom, CBS, the Walt Disney Company and Warner Brothers. And you can see these, they count both the views of YouTube and Facebook. They are very comparable and then others. And globally, by individual creators, then you can see that T-Series is number two, while most of the most popular and most views actually are children's videos. So children's videos actually play a very important role on YouTube because they are repeatedly shown to kids. So like 
Coco Melon, Kiss Diana show, these are all for children. But for individual overall views, then you can see that cross platform, it would include a lot of children's videos and also a lot of humor videos that people just have fun and then the memes that they spread across the world. And in the US, it's the pattern is similar, although Indian videos are not on top in the India uh, in the US usage, but still you can see the children's video and music video, sports, these are the funny videos are all on top of the most viewership. And for these most popular channels, there are some particular um, attributes that we can see. First, the majority of most of the subscribed channels started before 2011. So that means the history count, the more experience the person, the, the company or the creator has, the more likely they can accumulate the subscribers. And usually they are videos that are updated at least weekly. There's a high fluctuation of video among the videos in the same channel. And the views include both repeated viewing and a large number of unique viewers. So we have to understand those numbers of views is not how many people, but how many times it has been viewed. So it's very important to understand the kinds of views. And there's a high positive relationship between likes, views, and comments. And actually, we found those most popular channels, uh, videos, their comments are mostly positive. And for those most viewed videos, they are short videos. 85 most new videos in a 10 genres, only three are longer than 30 minutes. So the short one is important. And the moderate advertising presence, even though YouTube has such a high advertising revenue, but it's not so much you find advertising on YouTube videos. 32% when we analyze it have no advertising at all. And 29% use the full length mandatory as that people have to watch it before they could start watching the video. And 39% use the true view skillable ads. Music, gaming, science, technology, and new videos carry the most advertising. 93% of those videos have advertising in them. Music and how to videos are the most likely to use full length mandatory ads. Education and sports are videos that least likely to carry ads. Both national and local advertising can be found in the most popular videos. YouTube, look at the most popular, not, not the most popular channels, who are they? There are actually more than 5 million YouTube channels, and only 2 dozen channels have more than 1 million subscribers. So it's concentrate on a few very strong popular channels. For advertisers, they only focus on the most popular channels, but the long tail viewing of the niche channels can accumulate large number of audience globally around many channels. And also YouTube has the programmatic advertising platform that they target by demographics and you don't know which video actually being shown. So that's why there's also the controversy of advertiser control of the videos that they advertise. And YouTube users mostly are task oriented. They only find what they want and then leave. So when we look at from a marketer's point of view, YouTube is actually the best sampling site for video clips for professional content because it's free and no risk to the users. OK, so these are some basic information about YouTube. I'm more interested in what would be the future of online videos and what kind of things we can do as a researchers of online videos audience research. The first thing I think that everybody can join the research on this topic is the use of online videos by digital immigrants and the mobile and social media natives. Who are the digital immigrants? I am. And I think many of the professors here are the immigrants that you grew, did not grow up with social media, online video, or even internet. Only when you come of age, become an adult, it's a college student, then you start having uh, exposure to internet. So we, we learn how to use it, I use it, but I'm not native to it. So still I use a lot of traditional media and I see a lot of deficiency and limitations of online videos compared to the traditional media. So I'm not fully devoted, but 
I know how to use it, but how to make this immigrant become more and more natural and utilize it and proficiently utilize the videos is one question. And another important question is the mobile and social media natives. When I call natives, these people have never seen in a world that have no internet, no mobile phones, which are the teenagers and the, and, and the, and the twins, the children, because they never know a world that have no such thing. So they know what they uh, grew up with, uh, social media and videos. So they will see also very, very differently. So how people are converting to videos and how people naturally grew up with social media and videos would look at YouTube would be very interesting to study and other online videos as well. Another important topic is the DIY do it yourself self learning from online videos is a very important part now because especially the pandemic everybody is studying online. So this is very different. Like for example, I want a topic in the past probably I need to ask five I may not be able to find people who can help tell me, especially a specific topic like how to use Microsoft Teams, for example. I need to learn, but I can just easily now go to YouTube and then find it myself and then learn it. So we understand the do-it-yourself learning is very different from the traditional way of teaching because the learning is on demand. When we need to know the topic, then we find it and we want to get it right away. So this is how it works in the online video world when we talk about learning. And it's so self-paced because we can watch it multiple times. If we don't understand it, we can watch it multiple times to learn about it, which unlike in real life, life person teaching, you won't have that opportunity. Also, there's strong implications on lifelong learning because in the past, many people may deprive of the education opportunities and now they would be able to do it by three, uh, using online video learning. The most important thing is also the convenience, the technology affordance of online videos. You can search topics. You can find related topics as I as I show you earlier in the screen that apart from the video topic that you choose, you can YouTube also display all the related topic that you can click on if you want to know more. So it's a very convenient way for you to learn about a subject. Also for business purposes or just consumer, they can see product demonstration or so-called unboxing videos that coming from a, a, a reviewer and then they got the product from fresh out from the from the box package and then show you how to assemble it, how to use it and so on and so forth. These kind of things you probably would never imagine that would happen, but now it's happening. It's almost an expectation that if you buy a product, probably it should be somewhere there's a demonstration online already. Also, we also find a lot of self-created teachers and experts. They know something and they demonstrate their knowledge and showing how to do something, a craft or something, then it becomes very popular and people want to learn it. So right now the learning culture and the teaching couch, educator culture is changing with online videos. So there's a lot of effect and research that we can study on how you impact people's learning and uh, teaching. Another important area is the third area is self initiated search versus recommended content use. OK, when we try to find something, a topic, actually we may start with Google as a search. Well, people have complained a lot about that Google. When you try to search a video, it will show YouTube video. But recently when I look at it right now, for example, I just searched social influencer, the term for example, then the first top four is not a YouTube video. They are actually the video site, the video from the company site, not the YouTube site. So probably we have to study how much YouTube's result can turn out in the video search versus the in the natural search. But of course, if you go to YouTube when you search the topic, then of course it is showing you this. When you go to each person will have a different YouTube homepage if you are a subscriber. Because basically you would see the recommended page, recommended videos to you, which you may or may not like it, but they just based on some past algorithm, your viewing habit, they create a list of pages. And actually, if you scroll down, there are 200, about 200 videos that you can watch from each recommended page. And every time when you refresh it and load it, it's a new page. 
So all these kind of things is very interesting. And also now they make it very easy with all these different topics that you can click on that as well. So what's the importance? Because self-initiated search, of course, you theoretically are more in control. But when you are using the recommended video use, then you would have likely to be under your echo chamber, which is your own like-minded topics or people or content that you see, or whether it would bring in more exploration. Actually, I have a research project with my student in Saudi Arabia, and that we found more media genre diversity use with high recommended video use. But this is only a relationship that when people are interested to explore different genres, they are more likely to use recommended videos or vice versa. People who use a lot of recommended videos, they are more likely to watch more different type of videos. So, but in terms of specific viewpoint, I think they need more research on it. And also because recommended page, the videos are customized for each person. So the page you saw is different from yours, which is very different in a TV screen that we are used to, that we watch TV, everybody watch the same program, which if you watch the same channel, the same, no. Everyone have a different experience. So how viewing experience is being formed in this kind of environment is also very interesting to study. <coughs> Moreover, video, when they are being recommended to you, it increases our platform dependency and passivity that we just follow the instruction uh, recommendation from the company, especially TikTok is using in particular this particular format that you don't need to use your brain, you just flip the, the page and then you would flip the screen, you can see, keep on seeing videos recommended to you. You don't need to find yourself. Another important is the global and domestic audience difference. When we consume content outside our own country, what would happen? So there's some advantages. Advancing how to advance uh, the domestic and foreign content consumption media effects. For example, is there a concept of a cultural discount, which means that you probably prefer your own country's content than other countries because you have the same culture, same jokes, same values, right? This, well, so their foreign content have a discount when they try to enter a, a market. And there's another thing about cultural imperialism that, well, those dominant dominant countries like the US or UK, when they spread the, the videos online, they would be dominating other countries' culture as cultural imperialism. But does it work that way? Or now in the online, when it's a plain, kind of fair playing field, it would be different. So it would be interesting to study more. Also, the language barriers that we used to have in the past is now fading away because Google now has a lot of um, automated translation. Of course, the translation is not for all, all languages, probably Indian languages, probably they're not doing that much. You have to tell me because, well, I am not living in India, so probably you can tell me how, how well Google do the local translation for Indian languages. But for uh, most people in the US who use English, then the transla um, translation is pretty okay if you just want to know the content. So it really helped break through the language barrier and you can expose to a lot of non-domestic content on YouTube. Also, it can also create a distance witness effect, in particular if you watch a lot of live events, so which did not happen in your lo local locality, but because you have YouTube, so you can watch events that happen thousands of miles away. So you are the distance witness of this event, and then you can look at how and make a judgment oh whether like george floyd's uh uh the killing of george floyd everybody have their own opinion because they watch a video online finally there's a lot of political conspiracy theories that spread online and misinformation and propaganda so how people you fell into it and also well how would they influence their trust in the government trust in foreign government and international relations are very, very important topics to be studied. And most important of all, I talk about in the book is the promotional and entrepreneurial culture or YouTube and online videos. Because by nature, these videos creators, they are just their own creator, creating their own content. 
and they're like entrepreneur because they want to create their own channel, right? And tell people their story and share the information and knowledge. So this kind of information, we call it one type of such entrepreneurial use is content marketing. So basically you can create a dedicated YouTube channel for brands or course like Nike or any other major brands almost they all have their own channels on YouTube now. If you don't have your own channels, you can also do the content marketing of yourself or other not a subject knowledge through joining a cloud platform like TED Talk. Then you become the expert on that topic. And finally, there's also you can through going through the influencer marketing, which use the influencer to spread the word to to show something to advocate for the brand. So video product sh review sharing is an important phenomenon because now we learn to about a product. We watch a video and about well, how to use a product or something. And like um, JNM is one of the very, very popular uh, blogger on YouTube and he, her close encounters is a very popular channel and she show how her, her day work and then actually show a lot of products and things and then influence a lot of people. Finally, I would like to talk about audience empowerment and input to online video recommendation algorithm. OK, so we know that. YouTube is basically a very programmatic way of showing things to you. So how but most people are very quiet, especially in our study. Most people are the passive audience. Only 12 percent are the active creators. Most people just even they don't don't comment. They just watch the videos. That's it. But then because YouTube based on those digital traces that you provided to them. In, in, in addition to what you watch, if you share something or if you uh, comment on something, then it would listen to what you are what you are doing and then push the content to you. So it's very important to let YouTube and the creators know what you like and what you don't like, especially if we try to combat the issue of conspiracy theory, propaganda, misinformation, we have to do more. So we have to empower audience on the YouTube on online video. So one thing that we have we have to think about is what are the features that we can use to help. So we can of course click the like, right, or thumbs down. You can also share the video, but you can also click on these three dots to report problematic content, so that YouTube can demonetize the YouTube creator so that they were discouraged to create those kind of content that would minimize those content being shown on YouTube. So of course you can do the transcript and things, but I want to show you the report video. I don't know how many of you have used this feature. If you haven't used it, I strongly encourage you to use it after you watch a video, especially if you feel the content is really troublesome. You should really report the content, whether they have sexual content, violent, hateful, harmful, child abuse, terrorism, spam, caption issue, or infringe my rights. Or you can also write your own comment and it's already there, so you just write it. So I'm ending this conversation and presentation with a little bit of advertisement about my book because for this uh, particular uh, lecture, I asked my publisher to see whether we can do something for our audience. So one thing that we can provide is a, a discount, a 30% discount code for the um, uh, book with this LEX30, LEUTH20. Just type this word on the web website here. Then you can also look at the the specific content that we have for the for the book, and then you get thirty percent discount. Ebook, the good thing is that you don't need shipping everything, so you can get it right away. So uh, if you're interested in it, please do so. And I think that probably it may be expensive for individual to own it, but for library, I think it's 
quite reasonable price for them to buy it. So please send this discount code to your um, library to consider purchasing it. So I also have my YouTube channel, but I'm not a YouTuber or anything. I just uh, recently I just do the channel. I did not do it in the past because I think that now because of the online videos and um, online teaching that I am doing more, I have accumulated more stuff that I could put up on the channel. So, um, but you can see some of other my other presentation on there. Also, you can also um, look at my Google Scholar to look at my different uh, articles. And if you go to WordPress and ResearchGate, then you can download my articles, uh, those that are legal, legally I could share. And of course, you can also follow my Twitter, Louisa Ha JMCQ, because I'm the editor. I usually would uh, release the article um, early in advance, right after it's published online. I provide one month free access to the article, so I usually use the platform to disseminate the free articles. I strongly recommend you to um, follow me so that you can get the latest article for free. And of course, you can email me if you have any questions about any topic that I could help. Thank you.